Praise the Lord. It is an honor this morning that you come and be with us in worship on uh, Christmas Eve. Hallelujah. And what is your, even is a greater honor, Sister Lorraine, she's kind of had some sickness this year. And I was praying, Lord, please let her be well enough to be here on Christmas Day. And she's here, and as our tradition, she's going to sing this morning. Amen. Give Sister Lorraine.
everybody. Amen. Amen. Let the worship team know you love them and the children. Amen. Amen. We're honored that you've chosen to come worship with us today on uh, Christmas Eve. 
Christmas Eve. God is good, and we appreciate you, and we thank you for being here today. I just want to remind you there will be no service tonight. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. No service tonight. Next Sunday is uh, New Year's Eve. We'll have a regular Sunday. We'll have a regular, uh, normal CR service. But then we're going to meet back here at 1030 on uh, New Year's Eve and just worship our way into the new year. Isn't that going to be good? Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 We're excited about that. I'm excited you're here today. We'll get right into the Word this morning. I have a just have a word just been burning in my spirit for a long time, uh, and uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited what He's doing here at Hope City. I'm looking for the, the new year, 2024. Hey, how many is looking forward to 2024? I'm looking forward to 2024. And uh, I'm praying, hoping, praying to get in our new building. And gosh, I'm telling you, you just, I just get so excited. Amen. We're just thankful for you today. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to turn. You don't have to stand because you've been standing for worship. But I, I want to turn to the book of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1. I'm also going to flip over to Luke, chapter 1. And I want to read a few verses today. And then uh, we'll just see where we go from there. Matthew chapter 1 is where I'm going to go. I'm going to start at verse number 18. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18. Going to the Christmas story. You'll find the Christmas story in the book in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Don't look for it in Mark because you won't find it there. Don't look for it in John because he won't be there either. But you'll find it in the, in the books of Matthew and the books, a book of Luke. You'll find the Christmas story. Let's turn to Matthew chapter number 1, and I'm going to read just a few verses, then I'm going to turn to Luke chapter 1 also. But the word says at verse number 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her, public, make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. This is where my thoughts coming from. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. I want to turn right now to the book of Luke chapter number 1. And I want to go down to verse number 26. Pretty much the same story, just going to a different person. And in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, as of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came in, came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art, my, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of, of the Highest, and the Lord shall give shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. I want to talk for a little bit this morning, and I've titled this, this sermon today, You want to? I, I don't do that a lot, but I've titled this sermon, What's in a Name? What's in a Name? One of the most famous playwrights of all times, his name is William Shakespeare. Yeah. How many has ever heard of William Shakespeare? Yeah. William Shakespeare, he wrote, a, he wrote a play, and I'm sure most of you have heard of it, even to the, maybe, maybe not the children in, in, in elementary school, but most of them just heard of it, and the play is called Romeo and Juliet. Anybody ever heard of Romeo and Juliet? I know there's a lot of these little boys that go around and they come in all dressed up and their hair is just right. And I call them, hey, Romeo, how you doing? And they look at me like they have not a clue what I'm talking about. Who in the world is Romeo? 
So uh, he wrote this play called Romeo and Juliet. And there is a line, or there is a phrase in that play. And that line says, uh, in that play, says, that which we call a rose by any, any other name would smell just as sweet. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Now, when you begin to look at that, and I was an English major in college, and we had to do a lot of paper, but I, I mean, I was digging back notes from 35 years ago, and I've got them, trust me. But, but uh, if, if you begin to do a little research on that, what, what these people that, that analyze these writings and these plays, what they are saying, what, what Mr. Shakespeare was saying, basically, is, to that is, a name is irrelevant. A name really has no bearing on anything. In, in other words, if that tissue box would smell sweet, we, we would not even think about a rose. So, he, And that's the reason he was saying that. So when we think about this, I want to say this morning, I highly disagree with Mr. Shakespeare. Come on. You're going to get it here in a minute. Names carry importance. Somebody say names carry importance. <laughs> Names are so important. There is one thing in our lives in which we have little control over. Absolutely, we have no control over. And that is what our name is. We have no control over our name. We were given our names by our parents before we were even uh, born. Uh, uh, some of us were named uh, uh, after our parents. And a lot of times it's a case of a young man, and he's called Junior. And he has the distinction of either living down the reputation of his father or living up to the reputation of his father. Hello. Come on. So we have no, no uh, uh, really... Uh, we have no, no control of that. We, we see, I saw an article the other day, and the big phenom, the, the, the freshman phenom that's played this year at the Kentucky Wildcats is Reed Shepard. And I, I, I listened here, I said, Reed, I listened to a guy, and he said, There's going to be a lot of children, a lot of boys named Reed. There's going to be a lot of dogs named Reed. Because of this young young guy that is playing at Kentucky. There's a lot. That, see, we name them after television personalities. We name after movie stars. We name our children after biblical characters. We name them after sports stars. But what does your name mean? Oh, I know it's quiet this morning. Don't go like this. What does your name mean? And I've really been, I mean, I've got seven pages of notes up here, and I probably won't get through all of it. But what does your, what, what is the meaning? I, I dare say that most of us in this room, we don't even know what our name does mean. Can I get, anybody? Come on. Come on. We, don't, we don't have a clue what our name is. It's just something we've been called all our life. But you might want to do a little bit of research on it. But the Hebrews, they took great length of, of work in naming their children. There was a lot. They named their children. And when they named them, they chose the name of the baby, usually for its meaning in God or to acknowledge its gift or to express some hope of aspiration in Him. The name always meant something. That, and and they, were, they were aware of its, of its significance uh, of each particular child. Now, when I thought about that, I thought about what, to, what, what about my name? Well, let me, let, me give you a little, let me give you a little history this morning. My name, when I was born, when I was born in Benham, Kentucky, in Harlan in 1964 on the 16th day of August, and I was born in Benham Hospital uh, to Ann Grand Dixon. I had an older brother. His name was James. He's about two and a half, three years older than me. And uh, when I was born, they named me Timothy Wayne. That was my name. They named me. And for a couple of days in the hospital... My name was Timothy Wayne. And when they brought me home, my name was Timothy Wayne. Until somebody came into the house and looked at us, my brother sitting there holding, and they said, oh, you've got a Jimmy and a Timmy. <laughs> and my dad said, no, no, no. We ain't doing this. We're not doing it. Because my dad, he would never call my brother Jim or Jimmy. He always called him James. And my dad said, we're not doing this. We're not having a Jimmy and a Timmy. And my mother agreed. So they called back to the hospital and asked them if they had sent my birth certificate off. Now, this is three or four days into it. They said, no, we've not sent it because then it was, you had to mail it. It was a process. They said, no, we still haven't. They said, we want to change his name to Bruce Allen. Hallelujah. <laughs> So I began to look at that, and I thought, well, the name Timothy means honored by God, which is pretty cool. 
I like that. But then I looked up my name. My name, Bruce. It means from the thicket. It means power, bravery, nobility, leadership. I like that better. <laughs> Are you with me? So then I thought, well, if that's what my name means, then what does my children's name mean? So I looked up Courtney. And Courtney means courteous. She's not always been courteous to her father. <laughs> she was a little stubborn growing up, but she's made a wonderful wonderful lady of God. And I'm very, very happy for her. And my mic just died and I'll switch. So when we think, I went back, come back. Sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. <laughs> so uh, Bruce means uh, from the thicket power. Right? Courtney means courteous. Courtney's husband, Tyler, his name means brick or tile, layer or maker. My son, Caleb, his name means faithful, wholehearted, bold, brave. Kaylee, his beautiful wife, her name means slender, Fair, beautiful, graceful. Boy, they nailed that one. Amen. When, when they were getting ready to have a child, Caleb was telling me this story last night. I was giving him just a little tidbit of this sermon. He said, Dad, when, 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 when Kaylee was carrying Liam and he was in her womb and I would lay my hands on it and I would pray uh, for that and I would pray and I would ask God, I'd say, God, uh, make him courageous, uh, make him brave, make him strong, uh, make him courageous in you. Well, we look at that name. The name Liam means strong will. Boy, he is that. Protector, warrior, full of courage. So when we, we think about, well, I couldn't just stop with that, so I had to get a few more names. <laughs> the name Josh. The name Josh means God is salvation. Woo, I like that. Yes. The name Isaiah, Pastor Isaiah, means the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Boy, we got some pretty good names. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. I got a few more here as soon as I can find my notes. Well, hallelujah. I have lost them. I've got them here. Bear with me. Bam. There it is. The name Sean means God is gracious. Yes. That's our pastors. Pastor Josh, Pastor Isaiah, Pastor Sean. Well, I couldn't just stop there. I had to go to the worship team. The Allison means noble. Wesley means, I like this, and from the Western Meadow. <laughs> Isn't that good? Daniel means, God is my judge. Dylan means, the son of the sea. I looked up, this was a good one. Since we had Isaiah already as a pastor, we got Isaiah that plays on the, uh, an instrument based on it. Then his middle name, Seth, means an appointed place. Right. Tamra means a palm or a date tree. <laughs> Which means you're fruitful. Yeah. Amen. Heather means evergreen flower. Mick means the people of victory. Stacy means steadfast and fruitful. Teresa means late summer to harvest. Come on. Bryson means the son of a nobleman. I looked up his wife's names and it meant from the devil. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> it actually means messenger of God. There you go. And it... <laughs> I'm not sorry. Amen. <laughs> in our text this morning, in the text that we read to you today, we find that 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 Mary and Joseph did not have the responsibility of naming their child. God actually named them. Do you know why God named him? Because it was his son. And God, when he named him, he came up with a name uh, that was better than any other name. He came up with a name. That, uh, when we look at this, we look in the first chapter of Matthew, we find the story of God himself named this child. God, God could not leave the naming of this child to humanity. God could not leave the naming of this child because this child was so unique. This child was born of a virgin. This child came to us, to mankind. This was God made 
made flesh. God, so God sent an angel and the angel appeared and he gave a, a talk in the dream to Joseph and he came to Mary and he gave her a talk about what to name this child. Let me get back to my title. What is in a name? Shakespeare says that many names mean anything. But I want to say what is in the name of Jesus. There is first salvation in the name of Jesus. For he came to save his people from sin. Oh, somebody help me, Pastor. Sin is the root cause of all the trouble and strife and confusion and problems that we have in life. The problem with all of it is sin. Come on. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to hear preachers preaching about it. We don't like to hear Bible study about it. Because when we hear about sin, we, we think about things that we enjoy to do. Well, the scripture even tells us uh, there is pleasure in sin for a season. Yep. So when I thought about what's in a name, I thought that the name of Jesus come to seek and save us from our sin, came to deliver us from this place that we are in. But sin has separated us. It separated us from God. Sin has separated us from others. There are those that are here this morning, and maybe you've had an addiction problem. We want to look at addiction problem. We want to look at homosexuality. We want to look at all that. Oh, that's a bad sin. Let me tell you, sin is sin. It doesn't matter. God does not have a superlative level of sin. Anything that separates us from God is called sin. So he sent his son and he named him Jesus to deliver us from sin. Oh, let me preach to you this morning. I, I might throw these notes away in a second. It's not going to the church that makes you free. It's not joining every church in McCurry County or the surrounding region. It's not that that breaks the hold of sin. It's not being able to quote a Bible verse. It's not being able to give money to the building of the kingdom of God. The only thing that can separate you from sin is Jesus. Sin separates us. Separates us from God. Separates us from others. Separates us from the church. It separates us from all of those things. Almost, I wrote myself a note here and I want to read this. Almost all of the problems of this world, individually and collectively, can be laid at the feet of sin. Let me take a step this morning. You individuals that's in this room today, all of your problems, all of the, the heartbreak, everything, can be laid at the feet of sin. But Jesus came to save us from our sins. He's not a, a babe lying in a manger. He's not, he's not still there with the three, the three kings standing by and the wise men, as the scripture said. He's not there with the, with the cattle uh, 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 making their sounds and the sheep making their sounds and, and the animals that's in the, the, in the stable. He's not there. He came, that was just how he got here. When he left here, he left here bringing victory to us as the body of Christ. Amen. See, we, can, we love to talk about him in the manger. But I don't want to leave it in the manger. Jesus came to save us from our sins. But the world doesn't want to be saved. We, 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 we're big supporters of people in addiction that's kind of come, come out of addiction. But let me say, make a statement. You will never break addiction until you want to be out of addiction. This is true. Amen. You won't. You will never make your marriage work until you want to make your marriage work. You will never make your children mine until you want to make your children mine. See, we have to want it, but it has to go further than want. We have to do something about it. Almost all the problems we have. What's in the name? The, 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 the angel said, told Joseph in the dream, said that thou shalt call him Jesus. In my Bible, in the King James, the word Jesus, all letters are capitalized. It, and, and the angel came, if you were here at the play last night, what a great job they done. But you could see the angel, when the angel spoke to Mary and told Mary, he, uh, he said, you, 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 you have got great favor with God and you shall call his name Jesus. King James, in my Bible, all the letters are capitalized because it has great importance. Uh, what is in the name? There is salvation in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody say salvation. salvation. All you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. That's all you got to do. Call on the name of Jesus. All you have to do is believe on that name which is above every name and you will give your heart, your life to Christ. That's all you have to do. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. It was true in my grandfather's day. It was true in my father's day. It's true in my day. It will be true in my grandson's day. All you have to do on the name of Jesus and you shall be Whew, This is good stuff. What's in the name of Jesus? There's, pre there's preservation in the name of Jesus. Jesus doesn't save you to leave you alone. But when He saves you, the Bible said He will go with you and He sticks closer to you than a brother. So when you're feeling the pressure of the world, when you're feeling the pressure of temptation, when you're, all you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus uh, and He's there. Yeah. Amen. He will preserve us. He will keep us. In our weakness, He is my strength. In your trials, He is your all. He will, he will be near you all, all the time, every day, 24-7. All you got to do is call on Him. He, he will hear your every call. He, he, he will not leave you alone. He will not forsake you. He'll walk with you. He will keep you. In, he will stay in your heart. He will, keep you, he will keep you in His hand. We can call by all these different things that He will do. Baby in a manger. Pretty good stuff. What's in a name? Well, let me tell you. Name, if you have a future. There, there is, there, uh, what's in a name? I don't know, I don't know what your name means. I gave you a few examples of some of the, those that worship on the stage. Our worship team, I like to pick up. So I gave you some of, some of the names of what they mean. I don't know uh, uh, what, what your name means. I don't know what the name of Jesus means to you. But to me, there is something about that name. Uh, there, is, there is no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Uh, there is no other name more by under heaven that you can be saved except by the name of Jesus. Uh, let me say it right now. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. I love the name of Jesus. He was, he was Moses' bush burning in the wilderness. But I call him Jesus. He was Solomon's rose of Sharon. But I call him Jesus. He was Jeremiah, Jeremiah's mighty battle axe. But I call him Jesus. Oh, I'm about to shout. He was Daniel's stone rolling down the hill. And he was Daniel in the, in the, in the den of lions in the, with Daniel. But I call him Jesus. Somebody help the preacher right here. He, he, he was Ezekiel's will and the wheel turning. But I call him Jesus. He's a friend of the friendless. He, 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 he's with us closer than a brother. Only hour. But I call him Jesus. He's a lover to the motherless, but I call him Jesus. He's a brother to the motherless, but I call him Jesus. What do you call him today? So often, we, 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 we forget that. He's my joy when I'm in sorrow. I wrote me a few things down. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my great burden bearer. He's a way out when there's no way. He's my shelter in the time of storm. He's my help in the time of need. He's my bridge over troubled waters. He's my strength and weakness. He's my comfort in distress. He's my peace in the valley. He's my song in the night. He's my all in all. But what do you call him? What's in a name? Shakespeare says that names have no significance. I would say that the fellow that was on the coast of Gathering, when he saw him coming, he knew his name. Yes. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. You may be here today. We want to give you a time of prayer. What a great time to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Shall I say today, I've got a Christmas tree up in my, my house, and I haven't had a Christmas tree in my house in five, six years. <clears throat> Kids gone. Everything goes. Life's the way it is. I'm not a bah humbug, even though I tease like I am. Y'all can do what you want to do, but I just hate taking them down. 
So now I have a stairway fireplace and I got trees up in my house. I got a train track that goes around the tree. And, uh, Caleb and Kaylee brought him over the other night when he walked in and I turned the train on his legs just started doing this and his arms was doing this. And he was so excited and I thought, well, I'll put a tree up every year. <laughs> I mean, he was wanting to grab that train and then go around there in that whistle and go, woo, woo. He was so excited. But Christmas is not about a train. It's not about a tree. It's not about a man riding a sleigh. Ooh, I'm about to preach to you now. Christmas is about a man named Jesus. Sit here with me, you can argue with me. Well, Jesus was born in the summertime, and uh, they just moved it to the winter solstice. I don't care what you say, what you do. We're celebrating December 25th as the birth of our Lord and, and, and Savior Jesus Christ. And so there is I, I, that name means everything to me. Amen. What is in a name? What is your name? My name means from a thicket. Well, I can get that. There ain't never been a hillbilly preacher right here in one. <laughs> Your name, you may not even know what it means. I challenge you to go home and look it up. When we were getting ready to name our children, we had books. That was before internet time. I didn't even want to turn off the computer on, you know, in the 90s. But we had books with babies' names. Books with babies' names. And I remember when Caleb was, uh, Pam was expecting Caleb, and I told him, told them, I said, I want to name you Caleb, Josiah. We had people, I had one lady come up to me and she said, I don't like the name Caleb. I'm going to smack her right in the mouth. <laughs> that hillbilly side was coming out of me. She said, I only know one man named Caleb and he's me. And I'm like, well, I guarantee you he's not the only man named Caleb in the world today. Let me show you a Caleb in the Bible. Let me show you this guy. See, we, 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 we look at this and we think, what's in a name? Yeah. I challenge you today to receive the name of Jesus. Yes. I challenge you today to accept that name into your life yes. and become a follower of Him. It will be the greatest present you have ever got yes. to receive who He is. So we're coming to the music this morning. What's in the name of Jesus? There is, there is Advent would be this Sunday would be peace. There is peace in the name. Peace that the Bible says passes all understanding. Pastor, how can peace pass all understanding? Let me give you an example from my walk. When your world's turned upside down, everything around you says, give up. Amen. There is peace in that name. When the doctor looks at you and says, there's nothing else I can do, there's peace in that name. When you're struggling raising your children, you're struggling in a relationship, there's peace in that name. When it seems like you can't make the bills, the money, everything work out, there's peace in the name. You may not have peace. I was just talking to the Lord. Good week. We've worked on the new building. I haven't shot myself with a nail gun. No one else has shot themselves with a nail gun. I've got all my Christmas shopping done. I got my tree up. My house is 80% clean. I got my daughter coming in to Wednesday, Tuesday. She's coming down. Pat Street. And I was just talking to God last night. I said, Lord, you bless me so much. I don't deserve it. I'm unworthy. 
And if you decide to take me tonight, I'm ready. Do you know why I can say that? Because I have peace. Maybe you can't say that. There is peace in His name. So you're sitting here this morning. I just want you to bow your heads with me. The Bible tells us that the Spirit of God draws us. I believe the Spirit of God is drawing some individuals today. It's not my job. It's my job to tell you about it. It's the Spirit's job to draw you. Because He can go into your heart. That mom that's sitting there today. The Spirit can go into your heart and draw you. That dad that's sitting here today. The Spirit of God can go into your heart and draw you. So you're here today. And I want to tell you, I will not embarrass you. But you're here. You will say, Pastor, I don't have that peace. You're that young man sitting in this room today. You, you, you prayed with God, but you've just allowed life. You're that young lady sitting here today. You just allowed life to rob you of your peace. You're that mama. You're that daddy. That grandmother. That grandpa. You want to say, Pastor, I need the peace in this year. I'm looking for the peace that only comes in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just raise your hand and say, pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. I know there's... Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You just raise it. You can take it right back down. Just raise it. Take it. You don't find peace in the name of Bruce. You don't find peace in the name of Pastor Josh or Pastor Isaiah or Pastor Sean find peace in the name of Jesus. The word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> it's simple. So this morning, as you stand with us around the room, we have a lot of hands go up today. If you're here today and you're visiting, I can just say welcome home. I'm glad you're here. If you are one of those that's here that raised your hand and this is your first time, I'm honored that you're here. But I want to tell you right now, listen to me. Just raising that hand, there's more to it. So you are that person that raised your hand today and you would say, Pastor, I need peace. I need peace in my life. I'm looking for peace in my life. I need peace in my life. I'm going to ask you to do something that's going to take a lot of courage on your part. I'm going to ask you to come from where you're standing. Come to this altar. Say, Lord, here I am. Come in my heart. I receive you. Just find your place to pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, ladies. That's it. Come on. Come on. Just find your place. Come on. I believe there's a couple more. Come on. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy labor. I'll give you rest. Give me some people just to get in here and pray with these men and women today as they accept the Lord, receive Christ. Sing, guys.
and wakes us with mercy and love. Jesus died. Who holds the orphan? Come on, come on. Sing it, Dale.
Save me from you. 